is another one, two, three here. This time with yet another Bionicle classic set review. This time we'll be taking a look at Toa Inika Jala. Now this is one of the few Bionicle sets I do actually have the original canister for. So let's just move the instructions and Jala aside. And then zoom in on the canister here. As you can see, I'm pretty sure the Toa Inika were the first to introduce this kind of long and thin shaped canister that wasn't round. As you can see on the side, we've got Bionicle there and then a map of Voinui. And same on this side. At the top, we do have Inika there, Bionicle Inika. Try me because when this was originally released, there would have been the sword in here and you could press the button to light it up. You can see Inika, Toa Jala. Then you can see Jala there in a pretty cool pose. 8727 is the set number. And then on the back, it's a little bit ripped at the top here, but you can just see Toa Jala again. There's how you can put him in the canister. And then we've got the other Toa and Inika advertised. I do also have Nuparo and Harley. And then we've got a Voinui. And then at the time, obviously, they had this Kanoka Club going on. So that was his bio code or Kanoka Club code. There. And obviously, it shows you how to work the Zamospheres and how to light up the soil, of course. And across the top of the canister, we've got another little map of Voyanui there. And this is where the four Zamospheres were stored. And obviously, take the lid off. And the lid splits into two parts. You have this top part here, which is where you can put your Zamospheres if you want to. And then when you put the lid back on, you can see they are nice and secure there. And then also the sword would lay here as well. But enough with the canister. Let's see what we've got inside the canister, starting off with the instructions first of all. As you can see, we've got on the front the same pose, uh, Jala in the same pose as what was on the canister. Uh, 8727 again. On the back, we have an advertisement for all of the Toa Inika, Matoro, Huki, and Kongu. I don't have, unfortunately. And then you can see we've got some ab old advertisements of old search. You can see I'm pretty sure that's the battle for Metro Nui there. I'm not too sure. Uh, and then here we've got an advertisement for Bionicle Heroes, the old website at the time, so yeah. Then an advertisement for the 2006 Titans, we have Axon and Brutaka, and then of course, Vazon and Fenra. Then here we have an advertisement for the system kind of building sets, as you can see. We have Paraka Stronghold, which looks really cool. Lava Chamber Gate, and Paraka Outpost. Then here, Voyanui, you can see the six Paraka and the Zamosphere set. I do have Hakan, Avak, and Fok. There. And then just got some information probably because of the batteries. And then how you can change the batteries in the sword, how you can put him in his canister, and then just the bill. And then there it shows you how you can take out the sword and zamospheres from the canister. So that's it for the instructions. Now let's get on to the actual set. And here he is, Toa Jala. As you can see, this guy does look like a pretty cool set. And I can tell you, he definitely is. Definitely one of my uh, top three favorite Toa Inika. Or Inika, however you say it. As we see, we start down at the feet. New for this year were these spiked feet here. I'm pretty sure they were new for this year, for 2006. And they look pretty cool. And in this set, we got them in this nice red, uh, metro red color. And then we had the Toa Mata hands, but recolored and technically you could say remolded in a transparent orangey colour so that really adds a lot of heat to him when you get him in certain light we've got these new leg pieces which were new for the Anika so that is pretty cool and they are a nice mould there you can see as we move up we've got the Visorak legs recolored in the transparent orange again along with this new Anika armour that attaches on just like the, all the Bionicle armor, and one little cunt is the top Zamosphere, never really stays in. You can see we've got the armor piece, and then you just attach it to a pin, and it attaches there, like so. 
So that was the, for the legs. As we moved up to the torso, yet again, they did something new with it. And you can see that when looking at this thing from the back. As you can see, we've got the Metro hip piece, but you can see this brand new body piece here. And what that allows is for this armor piece on the front to be placed on. And how that works is, without knocking the Zamospheres out, I can get this without losing anything. Uh, you see the Metro torso attaches on via some pins. And then we do get some pins that attach into his body there. And then this piece, which is one of the two new uh, main body armor pieces that they introduced in 2006, just attaches right over there like so, giving him a lot of coverage and looks pretty cool. And then as for the arms, you can see we've got the Visorak limb, then we've got the Metru leg, and then the Mata hand. And again, another new armor piece which attaches on the arm, like so, with that axle there. So that was pretty cool for that year. And the arm is the same over here, except this side has the Zamosphere shooter, which also comes with a new piece for this half of the air, which is this piece that keeps the Zamas in, in place, rather than like the Paraka, where you had to just pretty much lose the other Zamospheres and hope to find them, because the... the the Paraka could only hold one Zamosphere, whereas the Anika could hold four. So that was good. Obviously, we've got a lot of articulation in these because it introduced the brand new kind of Anika build, which obviously stayed true until the very first wave of Hero Factory, pretty much. And obviously, we've got the knee articulation, waist, foot, and the ankle kind of. And uh, wrist, arm, uh, elbow, shoulder, yeah, so basically all that range of articulation. And then this is the Zamosphere shooter, you just put your two fingers here, your thumb here, push in, and it would shoot out the Zamos. And um, without knocking the top one out, you could rapid fire this, as you see there, and um, now I've just probably lost most of those find the other one later. So that was pretty cool. And as for the weapon, let's just take a quick look at that on its own. As you can see, it is this nice flame sword. You can definitely see the flames in this. And then down here, it's really mainly blocky because of the batteries, but definitely has a nice design to it and makes it fit in with the sword. You can see this black button in here. Now if you just turn out the lights, yeah, press the button, and as you can see, we have got the light up flashing sword. And it doesn't look as good in the light as you can see, but it's still pretty cool, and that was definitely something really, really cool for that year. So let's just take a quick look at that again in full darkness, the whole sword flashing in full darkness, as you see there. And each Anika did come with a different colour. There was three colours, two K, two, uh, there was one colour for each two Anika. So, Harley also comes with green, and then uh, Naparo and Huki come with red, and Matoro and Kongu come with blue. Now the last thing is, of course, the new Anika heads. And the Anika heads were really unique. Because as you see the masks, you can kind of how when you look at the mask right from the front that this is going to be something different and obviously it was you see we've got this long rod coming out of the head and it just attaches to one of those ball joint pieces there and if we take off the head you can see it's really this weird kind of head it's also very unique and very interesting for the Anika and definitely pretty cool because it means the masks are much easier to put on and I'm not sure if it does glow in the dark. And I don't think it does. Obviously that's kind of misleading. I actually did think these were glow in the dark. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, that they are actually glow in the dark, but I don't think they are. I think they just kept the glow in the dark mask for the Paraka. 
And as you can see, Jalo's mask here, definitely very unique there. And you can see how it kind of connects on and how it is kind of molded around this new head. Yeah. And the white definitely gives the effect of teeth, if you look through there. And the green is the eye. And yeah, obviously these new masks were rubber, so that made them much easier to get on to the new headpiece. So that was pretty cool. And you can see we've got two axles there, so you can position the head more forward or more back, depending on what you want. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the Tower Inika Jala. Overall, pretty cool set, I have to say. As I said, definitely top, gets in my top three favorite Inika, which my favorite is Toa Niparu. And yeah, pretty cool. The next Toa Inika review will be on Niparu. And but before that, there will be more Bionicle recent uh, reviews of recent sets and other reviews as well. So don't expect another one of these Bionicle Classic reviews for a couple of weeks at, at the most. But yeah, that's about it for this review. Definitely a cool set. And if you can get your hands on this from eBay or something, like I just managed to do, then I definitely recommend it because the Amika, in my opinion, are definitely worth it. And just one last look at the sword, just with one light out though. There you go. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.